Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today I've got something tricky for you. Look at that. Check that out right there. We're gonna do a power pole mod on the ICOM 7100. And this is just a black box. This could be the AT180 for all you know looking at this. It's only when we give you the match set that this looks awesome. Let's get over to the bench and take a look and figure out how to get this job done. This thing here is still one of my favorite radios, the Wedge. And if you know, if you, if you see this online, you probably are thinking to yourself, this doesn't make a bit of sense being in this form factor. But if you actually sit down at your desk and use this radio, instead of it being a mobile radio, if you use this like it was just a regular radio in your home or at your RV or whatever, this is the perfect viewing angle for your eyeballs in order to see it while it is sitting on the desk and tap out on the touchscreen what to do or click on here. The microphone connects up to the back. If you have a CW key, that connects up to the back. If you have headphones, they connect up to the back. So all the things you would actually need to do to operate a radio successfully are right here at your fingertips in this small little form factor instead of the way most radios come where they have something like this sitting on your desk and then you have the faceplate here where you're trying to manipulate controls and change frequencies and so forth and then people detach the face and tilt it up or they put this thing on a stand to raise it up this is already done for you this actually makes a lot of sense in its original design parameters which is to go inside of your car and this would sit under the seat and then this thing here has a speaker in the back and again your microphone plugs in and this thing sits right up at your dashboard in a regular mounting bracket and is ready to go there as well. One of the things that we like to do as hams is put power poles on everything and radios never seem to catch up. It's got this kind of plug on the back side of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this thing over to power poles but first I want to plug it in and prove that it works. There it is. Another cool part about this is that you don't need a fancy separation cable or some special way to hold this thing together because this doesn't snap on by design and this is just a regular RJ45 straight through cable. So you're all set with that. Now that we've got all of that out of the way, let's get this thing powered down and switch on to our power pole kit, which is right here. Get out my trusty screwdriver kit. Three screws on the top and then three screws on each side. And then all nine screws are exactly the same size so you don't have to worry about which screw goes where. They all go anywhere. And then we have a grounding clip here that we need to be aware of. And then we have the two screws to land the connectors and they are different lengths, but we've got that all squared away. Jason sent over a set in red and a set in black. So you can have whichever color matches your fancy. Go a layer deeper and if you are worried about doing something like this, maybe ask a friend to help or watch the video a couple of times in a row to figure it out. But it is fairly straightforward. Like it says red right here for red and it says black right there for black and we have the power disconnected so we're not going to hurt ourselves. And then we just need to get this connector out. And what is the, what is the magic sauce to get that out? This connector actually goes into the radio to remove it and I'm trying my best to get it to go out of the radio to remove it and that's not the way that it works. You squeeze these guys here down on the sides and then push it in and it comes out. I think that's worth the price of the like button down below the video to show that I got that done. So what do we want? Do we want the red one or do we want the black one? If you if you follow the channel for any length of time then you know that I want the red one. So that one will go on the inside and this one here will line up on the outside to create the complete design as to what that's gonna look like. And that'll stand out nice. I like how that actually stands out and looks looks special. Time to get this thing here squared away. You wanna take your ring. I'm gonna slide this on first and I put it on backwards. I'm gonna slide this on first so that the beveled part here is going towards the power poles themselves. And then the red power pole goes towards the outside of the radio. And then you slide this into place And there's plenty of room in here for it to clear this corner notch in the circuit board. So don't worry about that. It is going to be a little bit fiddly to get it in. And when you do get it in, let me show you real quick. On your power poles, you guys have seen all these things before, but there are these little wings right here. On the back of the radio, there is a notch. Let me get a good pointer. There is a notch right here on both sides. And you're going to actually want to put that part of the power pole connector into that notch so that it is secure from being pushed forward and backward as you insert and remove the power cable over and over again. So again, let's put this guy on, red to the outside, 
and then we will slide it into place. And what I like to do to make this easier for myself, first off, is to get the power poles inside of the mounting bracket, get that inside of the hole and down past the circuit board part there. And then I will take the end of the power pole and squeeze it together a, just a little tiny bit, just to give it that much extra bit of, of help to get its job done. And then if you take a look, if the camera focuses well enough, you'll be able to see that it is notched in there. And then from there, I turn the radio around and I push that connector home to get it all seated properly. Verify that looks good. And it does. And then from our screwdriver set, we need to get the right size. That looks good. And then put this over the top and you'll see the power pole sticks out a little proud. And we take our screw and we screw it in. And you're screwing a machine screw into a piece of plastic. So just be careful not to over tighten it right there. And there is our finished product. After you get the power pole installed, it is time to get the power leads connected up to the main board. Remember that your red goes to the one that's labeled red. I, I know I don't need to remind you guys, but I felt like I needed to just hear my own voice there for a second. And the black goes to the black. There is plenty of room in the case to have this riding over top of that relay. So that's not a problem. And then we want to take the one that has the ground strap on it. And then we want to get our Phillips head screwdriver. This thing was put on a little bit diagonally. So we're going to put it back on a little bit diagonally. And then the positive does not have that connection because that would short out the radio and you don't want to do that. And then power it up and test it. Ta-da! Working good. Now you might notice that this came with two wires terminated into a ring terminal through a little bit of ferrite there. Definitely not a fuse. And what you'll see here is that there is thicker gauge wire being used here. Either one of these two is a fine way to do it. What they're doing here is they're using two wires to handle the amperage that's going from the connector through to the, the radio itself. We're just replacing that with one wire here to get the job done. So everything is straight away. I'm going to double check these guys here. They look good. I'm going to take my power pole cable that I have and verify that it fits in there nice and good. And it does. Before I do anything else, I'm going to get it powered on to verify that it works. Okay, so I have my power pole power connection here and we have the radio turned off. I'm gonna take this and plug her in. That goes in nice. And we are powered up and good to go. Perfect, so now I can disconnect the power pole connection and put the lid back on. And then what else I will do is I will take the original power connector, pigtail that's all made up, and I'll put it in the bag with the extra that I have here. And if I ever wanted to, I could just return it right to stock and nobody would be the wiser. Perfect. I'm not gonna lie, it was a little tricky, a little fiddly to get the connector in there, but when it is in, it is nice and clean. And that red there really stands out to let you know that there's something different about this, but Obviously it's 3D printed, you can get it in whatever color you want. The magic comes into the fact that Jason N0BOY has taken the time to measure out the connectors and verify that this can be done and that the wire lengths are the right length and everything you need in order to get this job done is included in the kit. So you are ready to go when you get it. All you have to do is order it. You don't need to source any extra nuts and bolts, any extra wires, any ring terminals, or anything like that. It's all in the little baggie. If you want some more information on this, there is a link in the description down below where you can get in contact with Jason and get yourself one of these guys right here. I like tinkering around with radios, hacking things into doing things that they weren't supposed to be doing, opening things up, putting things back together, building things from scratch, whatever the case may be. If that is something that interests you, then this is the channel for you, my friend. Right below the video, there is a subscribe button. Click it. It's free. It'll make us both happy. Happy is the name of the game. There's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.